Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In tonight's bulletin, Fiji open for business, says PM, as another local company invests more into the country. FPC TV Project Chachamon Fashion and Designer Awards Night lives up to expectations. And Ministry of Health lacks quality leaders, says the Minister. But first, Fiji first candidate Alex O'Connor will be sworn into Parliament tomorrow. He confirmed this to FPC News today. O'Connor was vetted by the Electoral Commission last month and awarded the vacant government parliament seat, which became available after the resignation of MP Pio Tikunduandua. His appointment has been gazetted. Now, one of the great names of Fijian business, the RC Manubai Group, has opened a new industries factory in Ba. Officiating at the opening, Prime Minister Vorenge Baini Marama says the complex is a potent signal of the renewed confidence local investors have in the economy. Akusita Tale reports. Fiji is on the move and open for business. The new $10 million foam and nylon rope production complex is owned by the RC Manubai Group, a prominent household name in Fiji. With state-of-the-art production facilities, it supplies the entire Fiji market and exports its products to other Pacific Island nations. And I'm told there's a good chance that export to New Zealand and Australia will begin soon. But this is just a the latest milestone in the story of the great company because uh, throughout its history the Patel family has shown enterprise, commitment, determination and the faith in the future of Fiji. With more than 80 employees in Ba, the company also has outlets all over Vitilevu and in Lambasa, making and selling products that Fiji needs to grow. When I look at what the RCM group has achieved, it reinforces my conviction about the best way to grow the Fijian economy. Democracy, good governance, and a free and fair market. The basic principle of democracy is that uh, ordinary people are capable of doing extraordinary things. Bani Marama says it is easier to start a business and do business with the region and the world than it has ever been in the past. It is easier today in Fiji to start a business, to build a business, and to do business with the region in the world than it has ever been in the past. And the Fiji First Government seeks a partnership with the private sector, the workers, the employees, and civil society to keep reforming the way we do things. Government is working towards igniting a spirit of enterprise in Fiji and do everything it can to promote innovation and hard work that are the hallmark of every successful modern nation state. Akusita Tale, FBC News. FPC TV's project Chechemon Fashion and Design Awards lived up to the expectations of over 200 guests who turned up for the event. It was a flawless night as one of some of Fiji's best clothes design and talents were displayed. Eleanor Turanga View has more. It was a night of fashion and glamour. Over 100 locally made Fijian garments were showcased and models and designers put up a glamorous performance for Project Chachamon, which evolved from FBC TV's Chachamon show to promote Fijian fashion and Fijian designers. Tonight we celebrate innovation, fashion, design, creativity and style that are proudly Fijian made. 
and more properly Fijian designed and Fijian sewn. Labels by locally renowned designers such as Hapfil Hoda, Moira Solvalu, Aise Konrote, Anna Rambuka, Anton Conway and Rosie Semisi were paraded on the runway last night as well as some from breakout designers Sidant Maraj, Prashika Ashweni, Akansha, S&M and the Second Chance Boys. Young designers Sedi Burese and Andre Masse were the most elated on the night. Their label Vo, which featured nine menswear and nine fantasy and recyclable wear, took out the main award as well as the best fantasy recycle award. My advice to young upcoming designers would be if you can dream it, you can pursue it, nothing is impossible. Be yourself and trust in God. Always put God first in your life and everything will flow from there. And find what you love, make it your job and you will never have to work a day in your life. Thousand dollars cash and a return trip to New Zealand or Australia flying Fiji Airways. The Model of the Year award went to 18 year old Marie Fall. She receives $500 cash and a trip to New Zealand to meet with a prominent model agency for possible representation in New Zealand and Asia. I'm, I'm really happy and privileged and blessed to be given this. Uh, prestigious prize. Designer Isaiah Conrote took out three awards last night. The Rubenisk Award, Three Piece Collection Award and Resort Wear Award. But my inspiration is basically my, my environment which is the islands, the, my surroundings. But I think for, for this collection for Project Chichamon, uh, which is something new, so I wanted to do something special. The Ethnic Wear Award went to Aza. Anna Rambuka took out the Evening Gown Award. The Street Wear Award went to Siddharth Maraj and the Men's Wear Award went to Second Chance. The designers showcased um, so much innovation and so much creativity and it's so exciting for the future of Fiji's fashion industry because tonight we've actually seen the work and the craftsmanship that goes into you know, putting collections because it's not easy and we're so proud that uh, you know, young designers, uh, students at Marius Brothers High School, one designer of the year, I mean that's amazing because they're going to be the platform for the generation of future Fiji. There are plans to make this an annual event. While it's rest time now after a successful night, we can expect preparatory work for a bigger and better project Chachamon 2016 to begin in two to three months' time. Eleanor Turangi View, FBC News. Now on to the Ministry of Health story. Once again, Health Minister Chone Osamate has highlighted the need for quality, strong leadership in the ministry. Osamate believes there should be leaders who are able to make good decisions at critical times. Ali Kimbia once again with this report. In line with the Health Minister's efforts to improve its service to the people, Health Minister Chone Osamate is concerned about the lack of quality of leadership in the ministry. Usumati says leaders should have the edge to make tough decisions. I'll tell you what I expect to see from all leaders. I expect all leaders to have energy, not be half dead, not be half dead, to be alive. When you see that leader walking, you can tell that he's alive. When he speaks to you, you can tell that he's alive. You have some leaders who speak to you and they, they will tell you it's a very good day, they look like this. <laughs> The minister says many who are in leadership roles in the ministry are too comfortable in their seat that they tend to ignore some of their responsibilities when it comes to dealing with staff. That's one of the big problems we have in our health. We know that there is an SOP and we can see somebody breaking the SOP but because we have lunch with them, you cannot tell them. That's a sign of poor leadership. Those people should not be leaders. Must have the guts to take the tough decisions. The Health Ministry is embarking on restructuring its processes as it improves to provide better and quality service to the people. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, Real Estate Licensing Board receives a large number of complaints against real estate agents. Mm-hmm.
If you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bola, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. The new Real Estate Licensing Board is dealing with a number of common com complaints from the public. Chairman Dr. Abdul Hassan says the new team, which has members from both private and the public sector, are adamant to improve the performance of the board in the next two years. Shireen Lata has more. The Real Estate Licensing Board has been receiving complaints of poor standard of services by real estate agents and salespersons, dishonest and unethical practices, exorbitant and unreasonable level of commission and fees charged and allegations of money laundering in the industry. We have seen uh, people who are not listed as real estate agents and yet they are operating uh, as agents. And uh, as you know that under the Act they are not supposed to. The process has to be followed uh, before they, uh, they, they will be uh, be given a station. In order to overcome this, the board is liaising with various government bodies to facilitate the tracking of records of those that are seeking to become real estate agents or those that are already holding license to operate as real estate agents in the country. We are trying our best to streamline the thing that uh, we have not been done in the manner that should have been done in the past. What we are trying to do is to control or take measures against those who are involved in illegal activity. A disciplinary committee meeting is expected next week to look into the complaints made. The chairman says a large percentage of the country's wealth is tied up in real estate and all parties dealing with this important asset must act prudently. Sharin Lata, FBC News. Success isn't always an individual effort. Sometimes it takes a dedicated team which puts its mind to something and doesn't stop until the end goal is achieved. Tonight's successful Fijian segment is about a team within the mobile communications giant Vodafone Fiji which has been recognized internationally. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. This segment isn't about a large conglomerate that's already making millions of dollars. It's about the people behind it and the drive for innovation. Vodafone Fiji has recently won an international award for innovation, beating bigger and better resourced competitors. According to the company, innovation is one of the core values stressed to all employees. We have many programs uh, which actually uh, foster innovation within the people that work within Vodafone. So we have programs like our Vodafone way, which is um, apart from doing your day-to-day -day job, what we do is we try and live and breathe the culture of Vodafone. So uh, what happens is a lot of people get together, they form cross-functional teams. So two people from finance, two from operations, two from sales, two from marketing and they bring in their expertise and they work on projects which is not part of their business as usual work. Prasad adds independence and dedication to work can make any business a success. It is also attributed to the type of leadership we have. So it's very open. Uh, the leaders are very visionary within the company. They are very tolerant of mistakes. So what we see with the, with the company is there's a lot of young dynamic people. So we let them loose, you know, go ahead and do this. All we want is uh, we sort of define the scope to say that this is the objective and this is what we want. And then we let them run free, think about it and come up with how they want to deliver the project. So what about the international award? A small team working with partners overseas has developed a new telephone switching system which runs on cloud technology. It's tailor-made for any business in Fiji. All the intelligence and the way the calls are processed and routed will now be done within the, the solution hosted at Vodafone Data Center. And uh, what this means for the customers is uh, they don't need to invest in expensive on-premise hardware. They don't need to worry about ongoing uh, operational or maintenance costs. They don't need to worry about any 
uh, hardware or software upgrades and it's very easy and scalable so it's basically uh, you pay for what you use. This is where the innovation part and teamwork played a key role in the success of the project which is already generating interest. Specifically for this project I think the team has been working behind the scene for almost uh, six, eight months now. Uh, we started trials uh, about a month ago. We've got our first commercial deployment happening as we speak with Pacific Cement Limited. Uh, that's one of the subsidiaries of Fijian Holdings Group. We've got a confirmed um, uh, order from Biosecurity Authority of Fiji and there's about another 15 to 20 uh, sales leads in the pipeline. According to the telecommunications company, continuous training and upskilling are vital for any business to stay ahead of the game and continue to innovate. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in FPC Sports, Pacific Games opened in PNG. And Milani in tears after winning first medals for Fiji. Golda family, the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bulabla, I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight on the Premium Classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Welcome to FPC Sports. The 15 Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea is highly likely to be the best hosted by any nation so far. The host nation received lots of praises at the opening ceremony last night. Rohit Deo has more. The athletes went to the Pacific Games with a doubt in mind about the quality of facilities available at the Games. All doubts were cleared upon arrival at the venue. There is no doubt that the facilities for the 2015 Port Moresby Games are the best we have seen so far in this region. Preparing to host the Games was not an easy task for Papua New Guinea. The effort has not only produced an enjoyable atmosphere, but it has also changed PNG as a whole. These came, Games can be a powerful catalyst for change. For the host city, the transformation has already begun. Since Port Moresby was awarded the Games six years ago, this city and its people have risen to the challenge to be ready. The Prime Minister of the host has encouraged the athletes to do their best and enjoy their stay in his country. Good luck to the athletes from every Pacific country. Please make us all proud and be God with you. Thank you very much. It was a night of colours that will be kept as memories for these athletes for years to come. The Pacific Games finishes on the 18th of this month. Rohit Deo. ABC Sports. Now, all 24 nations at the Pacific Games opening ceremony were cheered on as they stepped onto the main stage at Sir John Guy Stadium last night, except for Fiji and New Zealand. PAC News reports both were cheered on and booed later, and this has been attributed to negative reports shared on social media. Fiji is reported to have complained about the water at the Games Village and the New Zealand football team about the accommodation standards at the Games Village and are therefore staying at a different hotel. PNG Today has reported that Papua New Guinea water company Eda Ranu CEO Henry Mokono refutes claims by Team Fiji about the water supply to the Games venues by saying PNG's water through Eda Ranu is best in the Pacific and ranked 10th in the world standard. It's the safest water to drink during Pacific Games. He says the company delivers safe, quality water to residents every day in the city, brushed aside negative comments made by Team Fiji. Seruaya Malani has scooped Fiji's first medals at the Pacific Games in Papua New Guinea. She won three bronze medals in weightlifting categories of 48 kg snatch, 48 kg clean and jerk, and 48 kg totals. Meanwhile, Telma Meatawa of Papua New Guinea won gold in all three events, while Mary Bata from Australia took out three silver medals. 
The Vodafone Fiji football under 23 side thumped Federated States of Micronesia 38-0 in their second match today. Fiji was earlier held to a one-all draw by Vanuatu. Meanwhile, in other matches played today, New Caledonia defeated Solomon Islands 1-0. While in a match currently underway, New Zealand is playing host Papua New Guinea. The women's football competition kicks off tomorrow with Fiji playing PNG at 5 p.m. The Fiji women's basketball side defeated New Caledonia 85-40 today. This was Fiji's first match at the competition. In another match today, American Samoa defeated the Solomon Islands 80-44. And meanwhile, the men's side plays host PNG at 9 p.m. today. Vodafone Flying Fijians coach John McKee has named a reduced 36-member squad for the match against the Maori All Blacks and the Pacific Nations Cup. After two days of training, McKee now has a fair idea of the talents available in his team. The reduced squad marches back into camp tomorrow for another week of preparations. And Fiji takes on the Maori All Blacks this Saturday at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Taking a look at today's weather, brief showers were experienced over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. Elsewhere, fine weather prevailed. Now, a tropical depression was analyzed over the Solomon Islands at 3 p.m. today. The depression is moving southwest at about 5 knots. The associated trough of low pressure affects the Solomon Islands and Vanuatu. Meanwhile, another trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Fiji. Taking a look at the temperature, Savu Savu Pencil, the lowest temperature today hitting 27 degrees, Nandi the highest with 31 degrees. As for tomorrow, there will be showers in Suva and Savu Savu. Elsewhere, it should be fine. Now for the further outlook, fine apart from brief showers about the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands, it should be fine elsewhere. Our headlines once again, Fiji open for business says PM as another local company invests more into the country. FPC TV project Chechem on Fashion and Designer Awards Night lives up to expectation. And Ministry of Health lacks quality leaders, says Minister. On to our poll question for this week. Do you think Fiji Airways is doing all it can to serve its customers? You can visit our FPC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fpc.com.fj or you can send it to us via our Facebook page, FPC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. Good night. घर संसार में आपका स्वागत है आपका अपना छोटा सा स्वर जहाँ प्यार भरे रिश्ते पलते हैं जहाँ हेल्थी रहने की सलाह दी जाती है जहाँ हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहाँ स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूँ पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ ऐसा सुंदर सपना अपना